Alyssa, welcome mm-hmm. back to POW. Mari, thank you. I mean, we last talked in November of last year. That's wild. Time flies. Time flies and your life has changed <laughs> so much since then. Yeah, completely. A 180. Yeah. Part of this interview is going to be what we talked about in November because I feel like it was so valuable. So let's start because one of your major health goals when I met you was getting your period back. Yes. And now you sit in front of us. Bleeding. Menstruating. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I really am. Or are you actually? (laughs) Both of us. Really? Menstruating. We're We're sick. This was our goal. Like, I remember us bonding over the fact that we couldn't get our periods back. The last time we were in this building together, I think we were talking about it. Did we manifest it? I think so. Okay, tell us about the journey. Like, why do you think you ever lost it? How long was it? Let's talk. Okay, so when I was 19, I went off of birth control, got my wisdom teeth out, which started uh, a weight loss journey and changed diet lifestyle changes majorly all within like the same couple of weeks Mm. and I lost too much weight so I think that that was the factor of not getting it back at all Um, I also think going off birth control can stop it from coming back for a shorter amount of time but I think I prolonged it with the changes I made maybe some definitely some over exercising as well as um, I went vegan and I don't mean to blame veganism at all but I I think I did use uh, veganism as a way to you know eat less and make excuses Um, so all of those things were factors in it not coming back mind you I did not know that that would turn into eight and a half years so it did turn into eight and a half years and for the past I would say three years I've been like truly truly like purposefully really trying to get it back gaining healthy weight and exercising in a way like low impact and trying to regulate my nervous system acupuncture body work all the different things And it wasn't until, um, well, since I've seen you last, I am now single. And I can't blame that at all because I didn't have my period long before that relationship even started. But I was never in a place where I just felt free and like I didn't have to take care of someone. And I felt that since I was 19 that I had to take care of people and so I think getting out of a relationship feeling free and then also I did a I did some energy work um one-on-one energy work you know Jess Stone yeah yeah so her and I did this incredible experience and I went into it wanting to know why I don't get a period and I also um had kind of and I've never really talked about this but kind of a fear of men and intimacy always there was always a lot of shame around it. I was very always very shy since I was little I can remember like a guy would put his arm around me and I would just like freeze up and not know how to be sexual or anything like that and that actually came up during the experience a lot and um you know some things from the past that made a lot of sense as to why i would feel that way and um released it all and it felt incredible and kid you not i woke up the next day with cramps wow and i was like no way my body is like screwing with me like this is this is funny okay this is funny 10 days later I got my period and I think that that was so needed however I I don't want to also like minimize the importance of all the other things I was doing starting to eat little bits of meat and I mean like I only ate meat like six times maybe but it was like when my body was craving it and Mm -hmm. I just leaned into that and also body work was like mind blowing for me and so life changing. What is body work? Well, I think it can be like depending on the person, like 
so different. Mm-hmm. I work with um, a guy, his name's Brian, and his company's called Shen Generation. And like, we've built such a like beautiful relationship. And he just really, I feel like he, I don't know, he can probably, ex- he can explain what he does a lot better than I can. But I also feel like it's so personal. And he just, whether it's chiropracting, like, cracking the bones or it's um more pressure points of releasing different like emotional pressure points almost like massage technique um physical therapy technique it's pretty much like moving stagnant energy in your body and like he'll like press on um there's this one spot inside of your mouth he'll wear gloves and he'll press on the top of like your jaw area and I've bawled my eyes out from it and I've also started hysterically laughing from it and it's not like a pain thing it is like a full-blown emotional release and I always leave feeling like uh, so much lighter Mm -hmm. and clearer minded um it's it's wild it's wild I've talked to him a couple times I really need to go oh my goodness I'm kind of procrastinating because I've heard it's painful no 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 interesting maybe for everyone it's different it is different for everyone but i i have recommended so many people who are extremely skeptical about all of that and i was skeptical about it too you know i'm skeptical about everything i'm like okay what's like a little too woo woo and not and the people i've sent almost every single one has called me in tears being like i've never felt so connected to my body this is actually crazy i think that's such a big part of it and I can actually relate to you in terms of the intimacy and the shame Mm. that comes with it I think because of my past and how wild I was in college and Mm. maybe the lack of respect I had for myself during that time Mm. now I have a little bit of shame around being sexual Um, and I think a lot of times when we have that disconnection with our bodies the body knows and it shuts off million percent I mean like not to get to what tmi but just like experimenting with being and i'm not talking about with like even just partners but with myself like experimenting being sexual and feeling into myself and like being like proud of that like that came so easily to me once i did that energy work and like then i got my period and like i just have felt so just I the best word it's so corny but the best word I can use is free Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you say energy work do you mean like breath work or is it tarot cards so it was um there was a little bit of a like psychedelic drug involved can I say that on here yeah you can heck yeah okay um cool and I didn't mention that before just because I didn't know I didn't want to like have to recommend that to people because I also think there is like I went to an open breathwork class not too long ago and I was like I feel like that could have helped me and done it for me yeah oh it's insane out of this world like when Jess Stone and I first sat down during this experience what I hadn't taken anything yet and we did breathwork and I truly think that might have been the most transformative feeling out of all of it mind you yes the little bit of psychedelics that we did were just so mind opening and I was able to kind of go back to those places and like forgive people forgive myself and Mm -hmm. like understand myself and love myself more but I I do just want to like make sure that like people know that 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 isn't needed like the breath work the um reiki or you know any of those kind of methods as well are so powerful i feel like what psychedelics do is help with trust i don't know if you can relate to that but i feel like when i microdose or experiment with mushrooms the trust i have with whoever i'm with Mm -hmm. as long as it's someone that i have a good feeling about you have to you you have have to feel safe if it's someone that i don't know it can send me on a weird yep path but it also trust myself Mm -hmm. like I find that I stop questioning everything I'm saying everything I'm doing and I just feel at one and at peace and I wonder if that safety also allowed you to kind of be comfortable in your own body 
Oh my goodness, absolutely. And Jess Stone, like I, I mean, I think I'm like in love with her now. <laughs> She's honestly beautiful. She's perfect. She's beautiful. Uh, I sat with her for uh, 10 minutes at Sammy's event. Yeah. I was like, is this a mermaid? Imagine seven and a half hours. You might on have a, fallen on a in love with her. She's like, like gorgeous. Get married? <laughs> <laughs> she has like the best boobs. Uh, she's the best body, face, energy. Like she's so feminine. And yeah. I'm just like staring at her being like, I am ready to give my heart to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's incredible. She is. So. She also like looked into my soul and has never met me. Yeah, she and can knew do nothing that. about She's me. She's powerful too. So it was it was a really great experience. I need to sit with her again. You do. I want to talk about the hormone balancing journey because yeah. you mentioned gaining healthy weight back mm-hmm. and some of the things you had to do in order to get your period. And I think a lot of women are in the same position that we were in. I mean, I I think it's a hormone epidemic because a lot of oh, the yeah. women I speak to here in the office people our age, they've all been on birth control for years and years and years. They're on spironolactone, their hormones are messed up. They're Mm -hmm. just superficially covering it up with something. And I think a lot of girls are scared to slow down the workouts, maybe increase their fats or their meat. Like it it can be kind of intimidating. How did you approach that? And how has it affected your body image along Mm -hmm. the way? Well, first I wanna say I failed a thousand million times. And I still do. (laughs) Like, it's not a, there's no just end goal. You're healed. You're only doing low impact. And you're just like, I feel like you see so much of that on TikTok where you're like, I was doing this and now I'm just walking and I feel great. I mean, maybe for some people, but for me, no, it's like, Alyssa, you've done three days in a row of some high intensity classes and you're going against everything you preach. So let's reel it back in. And then we, and then I will, and I'll be proud of myself, but it's an ongoing like journey, you know? Um, But I definitely like made changes and I I do have to give myself credit for that. Um, I think that I yeah my nervous system was just in such a fight or flight and that's that can also affect your hormones because I wasn't taking birth control or anything like that and I I you know everyone has their own their own thing that they need to like I'm not against birth control for people Um, if they need to do that they need to do that but I will say like I think there's such a beautiful thing with trying to figure out what's like really going on in your body and how to like work things out without that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely started to, I just, I think I started to like ask myself like what, what do you need right now? And like getting super in tune um, versus what is going to like make my adrenaline feel great because that that can feel good and it can confuse you but I think like meditation slowing down allows you to like really ask yourself those questions so I definitely did do a lot more walking a lot more reformer pilates and mat pilates and I feel like with working out too I used to like work out so high intensity and like be thinking about everything else but working out like be you know like be thinking in my head like Mm -hmm. what am I going to do tomorrow what am I just to get through the workout and then switching to being like super intentional and being like I'm working out my arm right now and it feels okay I feel that muscle like the whole mind to muscle thing is so powerful you start to feel stronger and you're not exhausting your body but you're you're gaining strength and Mm -hmm. I think the body knows that and it feels empowered and your nervous system is not so out of whack I think working out is an opportunity to be mindful Mm -hmm. and almost view it as a meditation exactly because if you're focused on the breathing and the individual muscle and not oh my god I have to do this this and this today yeah you're actually getting the benefit from the workout beyond the physical impact exactly and then also you you see that muscle start to define and that is like that I think is what helped my body image so much was it's like 
oh, I'm not just over exhausting myself to drop a pant size. Mm -hmm. Like that's not very empowering. Right. Um, to like be intentional with and commit. It's harder to commit to 45 minutes of intentional work and you're proud of yourself after. Then you look in the mirror and like, cause there's always a physical side to it. Like, uh, for me I'm always going to work out yes for my mind but I also want to look good and feel good and like looking in the mirror and being like oh my gosh I have a little booty muscle growing it's a great feeling oh yeah, yeah. growing rather than shrinking exactly so yeah. much more fun so much more fun and like getting a little shoulder moment yes. so fun yes let's talk about the breakup yeah first of all how are we doing how are we feeling we're feeling good yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you're yeah. glowing girl thank you um <laughs> <laughs> i've like really truly never been single um i was single before my last relationship for like technically for about a year and a half and i think i went on two dates i was just so not in my feminine so not open to it at all was very fearful about it when you say not in your feminine we've been talking about this like feminine slash masculine mm -hmm. era on the podcast can you explain what your view of that is yeah well i think that was a huge thing that made me realize i had been in the masculine was doing the experience with just stone because for me like masculine energy is a lot of hustle a lot of planning i think what the pandemic did to a lot of women is put us in this state of like girl boss mode which mm -hmm. is so beautiful and I think like a lot of people thrived off of it got really rich and successful I love that for them and also a lot of us got a little screwed up from it because I think it put us in this go 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 mentality um and the feminine to me is the opposite it's not planning so much it's flowing and being intuitive and feeling into what you might want to do that day even if you work a nine to five like just oh i'm gonna like wake up and i'm not gonna work out today i'm gonna go walk later um not always following like a plan mm -hmm. and being open to spontaneity and um, that was something I had completely not had in my life whatsoever. It doesn't allow, I think, like you to always tune into your sexual side as well. Um, and that was exactly the state I was in even before the pandemic, before my relationship, just because of, I think, all of like the hormone issues and the just hustle um taking care of people but like taking care of people not in just like a nurturing like i'm gonna cook for you way like oh i need to like work hard so that i can like provide and mm. like that's a very masculine energy and we all have both and we need a good balance of both but right now i'm stepping into that feminine i am like i don't even know what i want my job to be anymore i and i'm I'm just like that used to, if you were to tell me that a year ago, it would have given me so much anxiety and I am just like, I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm just kind of exploring this like new self and just like playing with it and having fun. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so inspiring because we are inundated, even for me with my own company I go through these ebbs and flows of feeling really empowered, being mm -hmm. in these big rooms with big people, making big decisions. But then I have these moments where I kind of want to be a little bit more free and flow with how I'm feeling. And luckily I have a partner who is obsessed with business and you know yeah. wants to do this for the rest of his life. So I kind of have the freedom to come on here and talk about different topics and talk about how I'm feeling and, and I go ride your horses like that's horses. probably such a connecting to self feeling for you which is probably very feminine 100% you know, you're so present it makes me think of us in like a tribe 
Yes. Like, what were we doing in our tribe? Yes. Like, picking berries? Right. Riding into the woods? Yeah, exactly. I don't know what you were doing. You were, we're like... Going back to our roots. <laughs> <laughs> no, but even I was thinking about how I went to a wedding and we were dancing until four in the morning in Italy. And that sounds so bougie, but, like... No, you were... So, so cool that I got to do that. I, I want to talk about the girl trip because, yeah. like, first of all, the girl trip was a moment on social media. Yeah. Like, I think everyone was talking about it because really? you and all your girlfriends, yeah. first of all, you were kind of all going through, like, a breakup. I know. Like, almost all of you. What happened. <laughs> there was one person was getting married. And then everyone else is back and I'm just the only one left. Well, tell me about the girl trip. Like, was yeah. it a very healing moment? Like, mm. what, what was that doing for you in the time? Oh, uh, post-breakup needing to be around just girls and then also like going to Italy which I had never been to before and like not really it's such a privilege I just want to say I am not like I don't like spend summers in Italy drinking wine and eating baguettes like some people do and that's I love that for them but this was my first time it was so cool like it was a pinch me moment every single second But yeah, to have like wine and bread at every meal and just not really have a plan was the most freaking healing thing ever to dance with all of my girlfriends. And oh, it could not have come at a better time. And I used to like if I was at a wedding dancing at at 2 a.m., I would be looking at my phone and the time and being like, but I need to wake up at seven because I have to work out. I got to go home. And I would always. And this time I was like, I don't even care if I have to wake up at seven. I'll do it and we'll figure it out. Like, I'm so proud of you for that because I know I've known you pretty well for, I think, over a year now or so. And I know both of us can be kind Mm -hmm. of regimented with nutrition and especially in the wellness space with the job that we have. Yeah so easy to overthink everything and also to limit yourself socially totally and watching you just live your best life dance in the rain eat your pasta have your gelato I was so happy for you and watching you do that thank you there were some spicy rumors flying around the internet were oh (laughs) me and Sam about you and Sammy I have to ask. I feel like I played into that one more. She, I don't, Sam doesn't read any comments or anything. I read everything because I'm toxic like that. And I just love to like, you know, just cry and laugh at all the things being said about me. Um, But I was like playing into it. And I was like, Sam, do you know that like people think we're dating and I'm like so playing into it? Like I'm like posting the most PDA things of us. I knew it. Just because it's fun. I was like. <laughs> People asked me if you guys were dating. I mean, we actually really just do act like that in real life. You do, because I've been around you guys when you, you're, yeah. you're like just very close and yeah. physical. And we were with 16 people on this trip in Italy. And the joke was like we were sharing a room and the couple next to us, Ben and Bale, they were like, we heard some shaking over there. <laughs> what were you guys getting up to last night? <laughs> like it was just an ongoing joke because like I'd be like feeding her pasta and our noses would be touching and we would be yeah like dancing in the rain in our own little world but I also think we were both like going through something and just really leaning on each other yeah and Italy is a very romantic place and we were with a bunch of couples so it was just like hey we're going to make out right now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think I saw that on the close friend yeah. story. I was like, because at that point I was like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe they are. are. I wasn't quite sure. And then the wedding photos <laughs> were so gorgeous yeah. and with you two together in the yellow dresses. Yeah. I was like, this might be happening. Yeah. I, honestly, that rumor is one that I am so proud of. <laughs> I That's probably my favorite thing that's ever happened in terms of like, because I feel like as like wellness girls in Venice, yeah. There's not that much tea or drama no ever. Tea. So I appreciated that oh, little spice. I'm like, come on, gals. Let's rough it up a little spice bit. Spice it up come a little on. bit. I'll do it. I'm the one now. I'm like, here, I'll spice it up for all of you. I love that for you. It was giving like real housewives. <laughs> yeah. I'm obsessed. Great. I love that. So at what point did you know it was time to end the relationship? For anyone listening who's maybe having an inkling of I like. I actually knew during our last recording. Stop. Yeah. That's why maybe you didn't bring it up that much. Yeah, I knew, but I still just, 
Um, I actually made a decision in November to end it, which I've never shared that, but it was just so it was just so taxing and also I cared about this person more than anything and realized like you know you see those quotes all the time like you can't fix someone and it was my bad that I thought I was powerful enough to do so because you aren't for anyone listening like you have to let that person do it on their own um and it was kind of time you know four years um three and a half years at that point I guess I was like yeah it's I'm I'm realizing that this is way way beyond my like anything I can do to help um and I also was just like I think that I am just capable of living a light fun bright beautiful life and it wasn't it just didn't feel like that at all it felt very hard um so I made that decision and then in the new year to be honest things kind of started to change and I felt like there was changes being made and this kind of happened a few times throughout the relationship and I was holding on to hope again because I just had like the most love respect and um and then it was in march that unfortunately i think you know how they say like you wear love goggles and then when you take them off you're like what's going on yeah like rose tinted glasses yeah there was like certain situations that came up that made me take those start to take those goggles off and um and I think that like side of me in November that was like so clear on it like I rem- I was reminded of of that state and I was just like okay like it needs to um end and since it's ended like when I ended the relationship I had no idea if um it would it would be done forever of course I feel like for your relationship like if you end it I don't know you're kind of like sometimes a lot of the time holding on to hope um but since then it's been extremely validating that it was absolutely and utterly the right thing to do (laughs) (laughs) that's a great way of putting it yeah what red flags should the girlies be looking out for from the beginning um I would say I would definitely say to make sure someone is wanting to be as invested in your life as they want you to be invested in their life, friends, family, work, um, that's important, that they want to be a part of your circle and not just have you be a part of theirs. Um, I also think that their commitment to their own mental health and health in general um, and personal development and growth, if you're interested in that, um, is very important because you cannot continue to push someone to to do that for themselves. And I would also just say um, – if you feel like you are being gaslit in any way at any time, you are. So listen to your gut. I love that. Yeah. And you are such a... I actually did an intro for this episode before you got here, but I was saying you are such a bright light and such a giver. Just in the time that I've known you, you are so caring. Like one of the most caring people I've known to your mm-hmm. friends, to everyone you're around. And I think watching you in that situation and just hearing about what was going on and then now seeing you in your feminine era you are just so much you just seem free and it's obvious to everyone around you I think how much happier you are yeah yeah which is it's a really um you know I had a little bit of like guilt and shame being like oh my goodness I feel so bad that I wasn't in that state in like because it feels right this feels like me Um, for so long but also 
you can't like dwell on that and it, taking it as just like I'm so grateful that I had that experience to grow from and that I can give I can give so easily now mm -hmm. and it, it like before I I was always a giver but it took so much energy from me and now it just like lifts me up because I have so much more space yeah yeah so what would you say looking forward is next are we dating yeah we're dating for the first time I'm like awkward and I am um, like don't know how it works and I'm just like asking all my friends like what do you do and how do you handle this but it's fun I are feel you on Raya no okay no not that I'm against that but I'm just not yet how do you go about like I wouldn't even know where to start people are just uh, setting me up so okay I'm just go I'm just leaning into that right now but um I just feel like a kid like I feel like a tw like a 18 year old which I don't know if it's a good thing, but I'm like, <laughs> well, if you've been in relationships for such a long time yeah. and also have lived kind of a regimented lifestyle, yeah. you probably have like want to lean into this moment yeah, and just playful. have fun. Yeah, hundred so percent. It's, it's great. And maybe from doing these podcasts, yeah. people are hearing you're single and just sliding in the DMs. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe. I mean, I have a very female heavy audience, so it's fine. Females, welcome. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay let's see what the girlies had to ask in the q a okay how did you two become friends mm. how did we become friends where did we meet all i knew was i was instantly obsessed with you Girl. no i you know if you heard the way i talk behind your back i'm sorry this is getting <laughs> cheesy but i i don't talk about anyone the way i talk about you I'm like, I love her. I'm obsessed. I get really passionate about it. You're so yeah. sweet. And I say the same things sweet. about you. Wow. Because people ask me about you and I'm like, she's an angel. I Actually, I've had a couple guys ask me about you. Really? Yeah, a chef. A, a French chef. chef. Oh, I'm going to set Ooh, that up. A chef. He cooks really well. Wow. That would be... <laughs> yeah, after your Italy era. I literally, I think we must have met at an event. We must have. And then met up for coffee or something. Yeah. Because you were like one of the first people I met in the oh, wellness space. I remember. Deus. We went to coffee. Dose? De Deus. De Dose. You call it Deus? I call it Deus. <laughs> I call it Dose. Okay. That was our first coffee date? It was. Mm -hmm. No way. But we had been like, we followed each other, we're talking, and then we finally- No, you're 100% right. Yeah. I feel like I was nervous. <laughs> I feel like I was nervous too. Cute. I think Aww. I ordered an iced coffee. I never order iced coffee. Yeah, you like panic. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a I'll get a cake. <laughs> now there's gonna be rumors that we're dating. I know. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. A little controversy. <laughs> Great. Uh do you miss living in Whoa. One more time. <laughs> yeah, one more time. It's okay. You got this. <laughs> do you miss living in Canada and would you ever move back? No great yeah just a hard no shout out canada yeah <laughs> what does your perfect morning look like mm. my perfect morning would be probably wake up and have some time for like make coffee um i'm doing i'm reading the artist's way right now so morning pages are a thing where you just like kind of mumbo jumbo whatever's on your mind out on the page for yeah. three pages um and so i do that maybe a little breath work situation and then probably go and do a nice workout of some sort or walk cute yeah simple drop that skincare routine sister mm, skincare routine favorite brand clear stem i knew you were gonna say that yeah it's it genuinely like yes i do work with them but like i didn't until i was obsessed with them and it's kind of the only one like i consistently use i have a couple products from other uh brands that i like that i'll use like a couple times a week but um that and christy kid her like everything of mm -hmm. hers i i see her for hydrafacials and that helps so much and then her retinol i just started using so like a tbd on that but apparently it's amazing so i really trust her in clear stem 
Yeah, your skin looks incredible. Thank you. And it's cool to hear you say you use clear stem because you don't really have acne prone skin. Yeah. But yeah. clearly it's like great for all types. Yeah, I developed dermatitis, which like was all just these like weird little dots around here. And that's when I like was like, okay, you can't just slap a Neutrogena face wipe on your face and like put some drugstore lotion on because I would do that before and just have perfect skin. Um, so that's when I was like, okay, I really need to find stuff that's good for sensitive skin. And like, I kid you not, I use someone else's cleanser, bumps come back. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, Clear Stem's great. Yeah. I recently went through everything I use on my face, makeup yeah. included, and put it in a website to see on what scale how like toxic yeah. it is for acne my kosas makeup i had to throw it out, throw it out. Mm. i was putting that kosas concealer all over my acne every no. day every single day milk concealer that one's my favorite mm. mm-hmm. mlk or just m-i-l-k m-i-l-k okay yeah that one's really good i'm using celeste told me to use rms oh i just got some of their stuff it's fire I just got their new skin tint sunscreen. Yeah, so good. Oh, yay. I okay, use the foundation great. every day, obsessed, very clean. Okay, great. Good to know. I had to wear makeup on a plane for the first time, which is my worst fear for some reason. And Why I had do like. You have to wear makeup on a plane. Because I had a meeting on a plane, which is so crazy. That is so cool. No, no, no I, I'm living like a wow. different life. It's yeah. bizarre. I feel yeah. like I'm in a movie. And I had to wear makeup, and I was like, oh my God, I want to die. But I wore the RMS and I'm and fine. And it was great? Yeah. Wow. Survived. Made Amazing. it out the other side. Okay. Ordering. Order Thank it. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome, RMS. Uh, recommendations for vitamins. One more time. I had too much coffee. Recommendations for vitamins and supplements that you take every day. That one's hard because I just feel like it's so personal. Mm. But I will say I do think... Almost everyone could thrive off of magnesium, and I love moon juices, um, magnesium powder. I take it every single night. Like, I would never miss a night, hmm. ever. I got to try that. Um, it helps amazing. with bowel movements too, right? Like, so much. It has magnesium okay. citrate in it, which really helps with um, that, digestion, going to the bathroom. But it also has L-theanine and another type of magnesium that just helps, like, calm and relax. And I really like JS Health Vitamins. I think that they're they're Australian, so a little more um, a little more promising than some American brands. Um, I also really like Array. Those are more so for me when I'm like feeling a specific thing, like oh, I feel bloated. I'm gonna take this. Not as much like daily mm -hmm. situations. Cool. Mm, what else do we have okay i need to stop post breakup mm -hmm. what are you looking for in your next partner okay so in my next partner i would say i'm really looking for i know this sounds cheesy but someone who's gonna bring out that kind of like light funness in me um and i think that would mean just someone who kind of like has a positive spontaneous mindset um and is adaptable to situations and can just make the best out of situations um who really gets along with my friends and family puts in work for that and i am very and always have been attracted to someone with not to get vain but good style um as well as someone who's very like passionate about their work and hobbies mm -hmm. I yeah. see that for you yeah I feel like I mean how old are you 28 I feel like if you're looking for a long-term partner it should be someone you want to have fun with mm -hmm. right yeah I want to laugh more yeah I so. love that I think I think you're gonna find that whether it's here or in Italy if you go back to Italy yeah, who wherever. knows but who knows? we're gonna manifest that for you Alyssa thank you so much for coming back thank you for having me we love you I love you guys and we're very proud of you thank you